Hey folks, Jang again from UltimateRC.com. Just continuing my build here of the Great Plains Yak 55. It's time to attach ailerons and they have included with the kit some clear tape. So, just a little roll of it, um, not too wide. It's similar in consistency to packing tape. It's glossy, uh, but it's, it's rather thin. And what they have you do is attach the aileron to the rest of the wing uh, by two long strips of that tape. One strip goes across the top, one strip goes across the bottom. Um, they don't tell you the exact order of, of uh, which, which to put on first, whether you put the tape on the aileron or you put the tape on the wing or you try to do it at the same time. I found it was easiest to put it onto the aileron itself first. So this already has the strip going all the way up and down on the top edge. They do tell you to do the top edge first. Uh, so I've just laid it down about 50% through, a little bit less than 50% in. Uh, so I've got room for a tiny bit of gap in between. And then just burnished the surface that's in contact with the tape uh, very carefully all the way down with the back of, of a fingernail. And that just makes sure that the tape is as adhered as well as it can get. And make sure to align the tip of the aileron to the tip of the wing, leaving just a very, very small little gap in there. Probably a millimeter, less than a millimeter. Got to have some gap, otherwise there will be a little bit of binding. Lightly touch it down in a couple spots, to verify that this is moving properly. Looks like it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and burnish down to the wing tape starting from the middle and there's that now I've got part of the hinging done you can see how that works and it's already comes pre-beveled um, the aileron surface comes pre-beveled to give you more range of motion so you don't need to have a huge gap in there and then they want you to do the underside also which is accomplished by folding this back as far as it'll go and then just laying another strip across here. I'm going to actually not use the tape that's included with the kit. I'm going to instead, for this underside surface, uh, because uh, it's already all white, it's not something I need to worry about what it's going to look like. I'm going to use strapping tape. It's about one inch uh, wide strapping tape. It's the stuff that has longitudinal fibers going down in one direction. It's a little bit, a little bit uh, stronger. It's also a little bit wider than the tape that they include here. It looks like this is three quarter inch tape compared to one inch. So it's just gonna give me a little bit more strength. I'm gonna do that off camera, but I already did one side over here. You can see this one is complete and it just has the, the strapping tape attached to the bottom side. And you can see a little bit better where there's, where there's some shadow because it's kind of hard to illuminate something that's white without making it wash out. But, can see how the, the tape just forms to all of the edges all the way. You have a little bit of overlap uh, onto the bottom flat surface of the aileron and onto the wing surface itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on the other side. Then it's time to start putting together some servos and some, some linkages. All right, so I went ahead and centered all these servos by hooking it up to, a, uh, to the radio. And then they want you to use these horns, these extensions for horns that are included in the kit. Got a couple like this, one-sided, and one double-sided one for the ailerons. But as it turns out, these high-tech uh, servos include an extra long horn right with the servo itself. And the holes that they ask you to use on this particular kit actually line up with some holes that already exist in this high-tech extra long extended horn. So I'm actually not going to use these at this time. I'm just going to use what already comes with the servo itself. And at this point, it is time to start gluing servos into the plane. It's a very new uh, concept for me, gluing a servo into place. I've never done that before. Seems a little extreme, but now I completely understand the appeal of the $2 or $2.70 or whatever they are, servos from hobbyparts.com, hobbyparts with a Z, 
or nitroplanes.com is the same company uh, because every time you use these things you end up losing them essentially i'm sure you can get them back out but it's a semi-destructive process but let me go ahead and uh, get a couple of these things glued in and start hooking them up all right i have some eight some uh servos glued in there now but came across some issues danger will robinson first of all for this servo right here the aileron servo um there are tabs on the servo just like any servo you know has regular mounting tabs there were no cutouts for the aileron uh, servos tabs to fit in so i needed to slot put a couple of slots in there just used an exacto knife before putting it in and just went in okay next up for the the elevator servo they say that you should install it Let's see i've got the tail here you should install it with the output shaft towards the rear like so got the sticker towards the front the output shaft is closer to the tail of the craft that's all well and good that jibes with what they uh, what they show in the pictures however over on this side for mr rudder servo they again say in the instructions in the text that you should install the the servo so that the the output shaft is towards the rear but then the pictures that they show you show it with the output shaft towards the front of the craft so those don't actually match up seems like the instructions the text is actually correct you want to put the output shaft towards the rear at least that's what i'm seeing so far based on uh, based on the, the lengths of the the control uh, uh, the control linkage then we come to the next thing moving back over here to the elevator control side let me pull up the elevator control rod if you want to install this first of all uh, the the holes on the servo horn a little bit on the a little bit on the small side so i did uh, i did enlarge that just a little bit and this is going to fit through okay and out here at the tail end, uh, you're going to attach it by just sticking the, the other end. It just has an L at this end. Uh, you're going to stick that through one of the holes in the, in the control arm, sort of like a servo horn that's already pre-attached. We did this earlier. Using what's called a micro fast link. When I saw it say micro fast link, I was like, micro what, what? I had no idea what that was. All right. Here is what they call a micro fast link. It's like a half of a clevis, like an open, half open sided clevis. And towards one end, this end here, it has a hole in it. And what you would do is take a control arm linkage, like so. Take the, the L bended end of it, like they have in this particular kit. And that is actually going to fit through the hole at the end and sometimes the hole is a little bit small sometimes the end of the wire is a little bit large from where they clipped it and it actually enlarged a little bit in this case i already enlarged the hole very slightly and i also filed the end of the of the wire and so that's going to go over like so and then push it in just a little bit more just a little bit more and then this end will actually clip over, the bottom end will actually clip over the wire. And again, a little bit off on the wire size, but that's the, that's the end result right there. That's the micro fast link, Great Plains design. And the idea is that you would have a control horn uh, right in that slot, and you just stick the, the L piece in there through the horn and then it would be captured by the micro fast link plastic piece so thank you google for helping me to figure that out but there is a problem again yes yet another problem okay here's my plane and 
here is the elevator control arm and this has already been modified but imagine if that little L connector at the end came out facing downward. Remember how I showed you that the, the piece needs to uh, go through the hole, the part of the end of the connector needs to go through the hole in here. So if that was facing down, this would attach at the end like so and basically allow it to effectively grab something this way. This way. But this horn, this control arm, uh, connector, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> for the elevator, is it needs to be gripped this way. It needs to be gripped from the sides. The L needs to go through it this way, going across the airplane. So this wire here, and I just tore out so much hair trying to figure it out. I just knew that it was something I was doing wrong or just didn't understand or didn't know because after all, I'm a complete idiot when it comes to airplanes. I know nothing about them. But no, in this case, they just gave me a part that was wrong. So there we go. That's the way it's supposed to go. That's the way that it needs to go. The L has to go through, the end has to go through the control horn at the base of the elevator so that it can actually, well, connect to something. And that required bending the wire 90 degrees, the end of the wire 90 degrees out so that instead of the end facing down, it would be facing straight out away from the fuselage. Then I can follow that up. Oh, also again, I needed to enlarge the hole. The hole was just way too small and it was impossible to get it through even after filing the end down a little bit to try to make it into a little bit of a, a little bit of an arrow uh, or a little bit of a spear. Then I can follow up by putting the so-called micro fast link on there. And you can see that's just loose right now, but then snap it over the wire, over the metal wire, and that's it. That should do it. I now have motion. One last little issue that came out of that ordeal is that this angle right here, I don't like this angle. Uh, seems that the linkage is a little bit on the short side. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'm mistaken on that, but it does appear to be just a little bit short because in order to fit with the elevator, looks like it's pretty level right now but i just don't like to have a horn that's or i don't like to have a servo that when it's just sitting idle it's not mechanically centered okay for hooking up the rudder to its control linkage control rod there was a notch that you actually need to cut in here yourself it doesn't come pre-cut so that you can put the the arm onto it and uh, they say that that should according to the dimensions that they give you in the instructions. They have a little illustration for it. This is supposed to go into the, the horn, excuse me, into the hinge just a little bit. So you get a little bit of the hinge for the sake of strength. It actually didn't go into the hinge for me, so I moved the slot uh, forward about two millimeters so that I could get just a piece of the hinge and still have a little bit of that strength in there uh, that they were asking for. Now I'm going to attach the horn, like so, it just slips right through. On the other side, it's going to get captured by a little flat piece like so. And that's glued in from both sides, and that should become nice and, uh, nice and firm. So I'm still able to get a nice range of motion out of the rudder. And then I'll just attach the, the linkage here, I'm going to need to again ream out the holes on both ends a little bit. And then I'll be able to attach the linkage the same way that I did the elevator linkage on the, on the other side with a micro fast link. Whoa, what just happened? The lighting changed again. And I'm wearing something different. Ah, that means time has gone by again, which means something went wrong again. Yes, as I continued to put in more uh, 
more linkages and I got my ailerons hooked up and I got all of the connecting rods for the entire craft hooked up, I realized a pattern. That whole thing about the, the uh, servo not being mechanically centered became uh, a consistent uh, theme throughout the thing and I ended up <clears throat> having ailerons where both ailerons were in the up position, both of them, and both of my horns uh, back here, elevator and rudder were both off center. And I realized that it was because essentially the output shaft seemed to be in the wrong position and or the length of the control rods seemed to be all wrong. And basically I think what's what happened is that the high-tech servos that I'm using uh, have their have their output shaft in a different position relative to the position that this kit expected out of servos uh, because it was consistent all the way across. So I ended up having to lengthen my control arms, uh, lengthen three of them, shorten one of them. Uh, in this case, I just uh, just rebent the the bend in the middle just stretched it out a little bit. However, with the rudder one, uh, it did not work so well. I went to bend it and I was trying to be careful and slow about it and it broke. So I had to make a new one from scratch. So that took a little bit of time. I used just music wire uh, 0 0.39 inch, no, 0 0.039 inch, I think. Uh, music wire and just bent bent up a new one. This one fits pretty well. Uh, it's still not quite perfect, but uh, it's much closer than the old one was. And uh, after getting that done, I went ahead and installed the receiver. Yes, I have a ginormous receiver, Airtronics receiver from an eight channel, uh, cheap eight channel radio system. It's what I have, so I'll use it. And got it all plugged up and trimmed up and now uh, all the control surfaces are working. So this is almost a flyable plane. Uh, just put a little bit of weight in the nose and it'll be a, a flyable glider at least. So I've got control surfaces working and just uh, had a couple of detours along the way. And now I'm going to go ahead and take a break and when I come back to it, I'm going to start dealing with installing the motor and uh, hooking up the speed control and uh, doing a final, uh, final preparation and final strengthening. So that's it for now. See you again next time.